Hello, welcome to Knowledge 5. We're moving into America now. We're away from the Greeks and ancient civilizations. We're going to be talking about some of the history in America. And today we're going to be we're going to be exploring the topic of the War of 1812. Now, we're going to learn about a war that was fought in Europe or it was not fought in Europe. It was our enemy was in Europe in this little country here called the Great Britain. Now, rem remember, Great Britain actually has fought us before and just recently as well. They just got done fighting us in the Revolutionary War. Remember, that was a war where it was a... Uh, um, where it brought us our freedom before we were kind of owned by Great Britain and we were, we were owned by them and we didn't really like the way they were treating us. They were making us pay all these taxes and we couldn't even represent the government. And so they got we got kind of angry and said we wanted to uh, have independence. So that's when the Revolutionary War started. This uh, Paul Revere warned us of the British attack. Then we wrote this document saying, no, we are going to be free. And we ended up beating them and winning that war. So again, as we go through this read aloud, this read aloud it happens in 1812, which is right here. So we just got done fighting a war, yet we're going to fight another one? Now, uh, as a reminder, when we talked about Paul Revere, he was the one that uh, he was the one that said uh, warned us that the British were coming. They warned us of their attack. Then we wrote that Declaration of Independence. Why did the colonists? Why did they decide to declare independence from Britain? Well, we wanted to be a free, independent nation, no longer be ruled by a king. Right now, we are ruled by a king. So then we wrote this uh, document after we won the war. We wrote this document called the Constitution. And the Constitution is kind of like the framework, kind of like the skeleton of our government, meaning anything that any new laws or anything that's going to be made has to follow what the Constitution says. So we can't say students who speak a wrong answer have to be kicked out of school. That can't be a law because we have the freedom of speech. So if anyone tried creating that law, we would say, no, it doesn't fit our Constitution. Just like in our classroom, we have a uh, we have a rule called attentive listening. So if I said, you can run around shouting, no, we can't do that because our constitution say we need an attentive listen. So after today's read aloud, you should be able to explain how the war between Britain and France affected the new United States and show an understanding of the word represent. From 1775 to 1783, America fought Great Britain for independence. This conflict was called the Revolutionary War. Against all odds, America won. What had been the 13 original colonies officially became the United States of America. After gaining independence, the American people did not want king or queens governing them anymore. Americans wanted to create a new kind of government. They wanted to be able to, to elect individuals to represent the people and act with their best interest in mind. They wanted a government that was by the people, for the people. Represent means to speak for or take action in place of someone. So they wanted to elect people who would be able to speak for and govern them with their best interests in, best interests in mind. To help create the new form of government, several elected leaders met in Philadelphia in May and June of 1787. Some leaders who could not attend, such as Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, wrote their ideas, wrote down their ideas. Together, this group of leaders became known as the Founding Fathers. The Founding Fathers' ideas all came together in a document called the U.S. Constitution. I'm just talking about this a little bit. The Constitution became the framework for the American government. Framework is the basic structure of something. A man named J James Madison, who we'll hear more about, had a clear vision of how the United States should govern itself. James Madison is known as the father of the Constitution because he put all of the ideas together by writing the Constitution with the help of George Washington and others. 
He also became the fourth president of the United States. For many years after the Revolutionary War, <clears throat> the United States grew large and wealthier. New states such as Vermont, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, and Louisiana were added. New territories were also settled. In 1803, the Pres President Thomas Jefferson purchased the Louisiana Territory from France. This purchase more than doubled the size of the United States. Here's that purchase right here. So before the United States here, and then in 1803, Thomas Jefferson bought this huge chunk of land, I think for a million bucks too, or something like that. <clears throat> Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, France and Britain went to war against each other. This series of wars became known as the Napoleonic Wars, named after the French leader at the time, Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte wanted to make France the most powerful nation in the world. Britain was determined to stop him. The United States considered both France and Great Britain to be its friends. It did not want to get involved in these costly, destructive wars, even though the Napoleonic war Wars were fought all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. They greatly affected the United States. So even though they were across the ocean, it was still affecting us. So we're going to hear about how. <clears throat> Much of the United States' growth during the time depended upon trade with France and Great Britain. Trade refers to business of buying and selling goods. So we do trade every day when you go shopping and when your parents go shopping at the store. They buy items. And what do they trade for those items? Money. For the trade that they were doing, they would trade some sort of item and they would get another item in return. <clears throat> Britain and France had many merchant or trading ships. These ships sailed across the Atlantic to trade goods with the United States, Canada, and many of the British and French-owned islands in the Caribbean. For example, the United States sent flour and tobacco to France and Great Britain, Great Britain and France received sugar and coffee or cocoa from other countries. Both countries wanted to stop others from trading with the United States. They each tried to prevent the other from getting money and supplies. They also did not want the United States to choose sides. So pretty much to quickly explain that, it's just like having two friends fighting with each other. And then one friend says, you can't play with them. And the other friend says, you can't play with the other friend. And so the United States is just caught in the middle. Where one said, you can't trade with them. And the other said, no, you can't trade with them. <laughs> so here's the, these little red dots are little trading routes. So boats would travel on these routes. And this is where we would trade with both Great Britain up here and France right here. To keep French from trading with the United States, the British blockaded or blocked several U.S. ports. They also blocked several important ports in Europe. This seriously hurt U.S. trade. France and Britain, both its large naval fleets positioned in the Atlantic Ocean to attack other ships. To make matters worse, the British and the French began to seize or capture American ships loaded with valuable cargo. It became almost impossible to safely transport goods from the United States to foreign ports. It was also more and more difficult for America to receive much needed goods. They kept blocking us from trading with them. Merchant ships weren't the only ships in the sea. The United States and Great Britain also had naval ships. Life in the British Navy was not easy. Conditions on their naval ships were terrible and punishments were harsh. Because of this, the British Navy had a hard time finding men who wanted to be sailors. To get more sailors, the British began to capture men from other countries' ships and force them to join the British Navy. Sometimes these sailors were British deserters. However, more times than not, the sailors who were seized weren't even British. But that did not stop the British from doing it. They even seized many U.S. sailors. This practice of forcing men into the British Navy was called impressment. So they're impressing our, sold, our sailors. They were taking their sa our sailors and forcing them to work on their boats. Bet the United States is getting pretty mad right now. 
the impressment of U.S. citizens, the impressment of U.S. citizens upset the American people and the U.S. government. As time went on, the United States found that it was losing more and more valuable cargo, sailors, money, and even ships. They demanded the British to stop impressing American sailors, but the British refused. So we heard a lot of things so far um, from how the British were kind of making us mad. So how did that war between France and Great Britain affect the new country known as the United States? Well, there's a couple things we saw. We saw where they're blockading or blocking our ports. They were stealing our cargo, stealing the stuff off the boats, and then stealing the sailors as well. Our word work word for today is the word represent. I will say the word, you repeat it after me. Represent. Represent means to speak for or take action in place of someone. The President of the United States is elected to represent the people of this country. So can you give an example of someone who represents others? So somebody blank represents blank. So for each group, name who or what they represent. So the President of the United States represents America. The Governor of Michigan represents Michigan. And the Mayor of Cadillac represents, you guessed it, Cadillac. So this was our first read aloud. However, guess what? The British are going to do more to make the Americans mad. Right now, we're not going to fight them yet, but pretty soon, I think there's going to be some, there's going to be a tipping point. So listen into the next read aloud as to hear what is that tipping point that caused us to go to war with Great Britain. 